so good afternoon everyone uh, thanks to heartful thanks to iscm for giving me this opportunity wonderful opportunity to speak about this topic uh, defibrillation and cardioversion so to start with welcome everyone welcome to the session so today we are going to deal with the topic defibrillation and cardioversion so we are going through the following uh, sub uh, subheadings of the topic uh, like definition history indications of uh, defibrillation indications of cardioversion and uh, what are the contraindications and uh, how do you anesthetize the patient during the procedure what is the equipment that's required positioning technique of the defibrillation and technique of cardioversion and uh, monophasic versus biphasic defibrillator and a brief uh, introduction about this acls 2020 guidelines for vt vf and adult tachycardia energy selection that is required for defibrillation and cardioversion uh, types of defibrillators types of cardioversion what are the complications that you see during uh, see during this procedure and what are the safety and uh, what are the precautions that you need to follow and followed by few mcqs of the related to the topic so uh, definition to start with uh, so defibrillation and cardioversion so when you hear the term defibrillation or cardioversion simply you should uh, get in the mind that it's nothing but a shock so shock how the what is the kind of shock that you are going to deliver to the patient that that is either defibrillation or cardioversion defibrillation is a non synchronized shock administration during the cardiac cycle and cardioversion is a synchronized administration during the r wave or the qrs complex of a, of a cardiac cycle so that is in detail i will explain how you going to do and what is the effectivity so why do you deliver a shock the aim to deliver the shock or electrical energy to the heart is to stun the heart momentarily and thus allow a normal sinus rhythm to kick in via the heart's normal pacemaker that is a sinoatrial node so whenever you give the shock the heart is stunned momentarily that allows the normal rhythm to uh, take in place again through the sinoatrial node coming to the history uh, as you can see in the images they are the first persons who have performed shock experiments it was done initially on the heart of dogs so what they did was they applied electrical shocks to the dogs and uh, they found that small shocks whenever they were applied to the dogs they have put the heart uh, dog dog's heart into ventricular fibrillation and that vf was successfully reversed with a larger shock that was the initial uh, footsteps of uh, defibrillation and cardioversion that was later developed and used by claude beck uh, which was used in a cardiothoracic surgery for a congenital heart disease uh, for a 14 year old boy so then in 1960s bernard lone designed the modern day monophasic defibrillator so this is based on the charging of the capacitors and then delivering of a shock by paddles over a few milliseconds in 1980s the biphasic waveform was discovered this provided a shock at lower levels of energy which were just as efficacious as the monophasic shock as in the image you can see that is a regular defibrillator that we use and uh, the biphasic and the monophasic regarding biphasic and the monophasic waveforms i will explain you in detail in the coming slides coming to indications of defibrillation when do you use the defibrillation and uh, what are the indications so as you can see the image uh, on the ecg on the right right hand side first indication is a pulseless ventricular tachycardia and the second indication is a ventricular fibrillation so as you can see this is the pulseless vt uh, without a pulse and this is the vf what are the indications of cardioversion uh, cardioversion is as, as i have told before cardio cardioversion is a synchronized shock that is delivered during the qrs complex or peak of r wave of a cardiac cycle so indications are supraventricular tachycardia atrial fibrillation atrial flutter ventricular tachycardia with pulse and reentrant tachycardia with narrow or wide qrs complex 
so indications of defibrillation are pulseless vt and vf indications of cardioversion supraventricular tachycardia atrial fibrillation atrial flutter vt with pulse most common and most important so in the ccg you can see this is the svt narrow qrs complex tachycardia and this is the atrial fibrillation as you can see this is very irregular in rhythm and there is no p wave on the ecg so in this atrial fibrillation atrial flutter svt and vt with pulse we give only cardioversion so what are the contraindications for uh, defibrillation and cardioversion so dysrhythmias due to enhanced automaticity such as in the digitalis toxicity and catecholamine induced arrhythmia these are not used because there is a homogeneous depolarization state so at the time if you give only if cardioversion is used that uh, the, then the patient will have a higher incidence of post shock vt or vf and in multifocal atrial tachycardia also cardioversion and defibrillation are not indicated so it is a painful so whenever you give a shock to a patient definitely it is always painful procedure whenever we get a shock by some electrical electricity it is a painful procedure as current traverses through the body so at the time some kind of anesthesia or some painkiller medication is definitely required so what is the kind of uh, anesthesia that you use during cardioversion so because cardioversion is an elective procedure it can be done under induction general indu general anesthesia induction or under normal uh, sedation but whenever you are doing card you are cardioverting a patient who is hemodynamically unstable or if cardiovascular collapse is imminent then uh, anesthesia is not possible and uh, defibrillation is an emergency procedure that you do in pulseless vt and vf at the time the patient will be probably in a collapsed state there is no provision for anesthesia or need for anesthesia as well so what are the equipments that you need that you need to keep ready because uh, you should be prepared for such a emergency scenario so what are the equipments that are needed so first is a defibrillator definitely defibrillator there are different types of defibrillator like automated external in detail i will explain in the coming slides but whatever defibrillator is available with you keep ready that so the paddle or the paddle of the defibrillator or the adhesive patch of the defibrillator that you have to keep ready as well as a conductive gel the ecg gel or the gel we use that you have to keep ready and you should be ready with the ecg monitor with oxygen with intubation kit emergency pacing equipment if it is a in a cardiology ward blood pressure cuff for, for measuring the blood pressure so oxygen uh, pulse oximetry or oxygen saturation monitor to monitor at the spo2 intravenous axis suction device and a acls cart these are all things you should keep ready so coming again coming repeating uh, you should be ready with the defibrillator and with the defibrillator you will get a paddle and the gel that you should be ready ecg monitor blood pressure cuff oxygen equipment oxygen probe intubation kit iv access suction device and the acls cart with the acls medication that you should keep ready so how do you position the paddles uh, how do you place the paddles there are two types of uh, positioning that is anterolateral and anteroposterior as you can see in the first image uh it is a, this is the anterior lateral so where do you place the anterior paddle on the right on the chest just towards right of the sternum upper sternum just below the clavicle and lateral one that you place at the cardiac apex to be precise it will be around fourth or fifth intercostal space below the nipple such that the center of the electrode will be at the anterior or mid axillary line again the anterior lateral position means anterior pad placement will be just towards right of the upper sternum just below the clavicle and the lateral pad placement will be at the fourth or fifth intercostal space below the nipple at the apex of the heart such that center of the electrode will be at the anterior axillary line or the mid axillary line anterior posterior means the posterior one will be at the infrascapular region 
either right or the left side and the anterior one will be at the cardiac apex so these are the two positionings that are uh, used uh, for the uh, defibrillation as well as cardioversion so commonly used is anterolateral only uh, all the time whenever you do by default anterolateral is used so but whenever uh, what are the situations where anteroposterior is used usually in children uh, the pad the size of the the size of the chest of the children will be less so that the pads will be encroached one upon another so in children mostly anteroposterior pad placement is used and also in patients with implantable uh, devices to avoid shunting of current to the implantable device anteroposterior is used but both positions are equally efficacious there is nothing that one position is uh, more efficacious than the other both positions are equally efficacious and anterolateral is most commonly used because of the ease of placement because for anteroposterior placement you need to place the patient in the lateral decubitus position and place one over the anterior and one over the posterior so that is why anteroposterior is rarely used except in the children so when to defibrillate so when whenever so this graph you can see like uh, initial phases of defibrillation it is going on going on going on and gradually you can see a flat line so initially when you are when the defibrillation has started when you defibrillate the chance of uh, reversing the rhythm is 80% after around 4 to 5 minutes it will be 60% after 8 minutes it will be only 20 20% and after 10 minutes I, you cannot reverse the rhythm so why it is happening because the phases of ventricular fibrillation can be explained in three phases electrical phase circulatory phase and the metabolic phase in the electrical phase uh, uh, which happens from minute 0 to minute 4 or 5 till here that uh, the, during that electrical phase the myocardium will not be depleted of its energy stores the myocardium will have its energy so by this time when you defibrillate the heart and reverse the rhythm the heart will have its energy stores to beat once the normal sinus rhythm is achieved but as you go on to the circulatory phase and to the metabolic phase heart will be depleted of its atp stores energy stores so even when the rhythm is uh, reverted the heart will not have enough energy to contract again so that is why the success of reversibility decreases as the time progresses so when to defibrillate you should defibrillate as early as possible within if you if you are able to defibrillate within the electrical phase within 4 to 5 minutes that is most effective so next we'll uh, talk about the technique so whenever uh, there there is an emergent application when you are apply when you are uh, using it uh, in an emergency procedure it will be a life saving procedure and there is no patient preparation when it is an elective cardioversion it should be used cautiously with proper patient selection and appropriate techniques and repetitive futile attempts of cardioversion should be avoided and acls measures should always be instituted when you are uh, doing the technique like uh, preparing for an iv access i already explained you what are the equipment that is needed so make sure you keep ready of everything uh, like iv access preparing for an airway sedative drugs that are needed monitoring technique monitoring devices like pulse oximetry blood pressure cuff ecg monitor these all things you should keep ready so um playing a small video on the technique of defibrillation in this video i'll explain you the technique you can see unresponsive and a pulseless patient first they should receive the cpr then the other rescuer who is standing on the other side of the bed you can see that he is attaching the paddles these are not paddles these are the adhesive patches or the pads that are used with that comes with the gel so extra gel is not needed when you use the pads so they are pressing the on button 
now the defib is on you can see the rhythm shockable rhythm which is a vf and the patient is unresponsive then charge the machine to 100 joules to start with instruct all person to clear the patient shock button press the shock button on the monitor you can see the shock is reverted the rhythm is reverted and then you can continue the cpr okay so what are the types uh, of defibrillatory waves like monophasic and uh, biphasic waveform defibrillators in the monophasic as you can see the current is delivered in only one direction in only one direction that is why the name monophasic in the biphasic uh, defibrillator the current is delivered in two directions in one half it is delivered in one direction and for the other half it is delivered in the opposite direction so a monophasic defibrillation delivers charge in only one direction biphasic defibrillation delivers charge in one direction for half of the shock and in electrically opposite direction for the second half biphasic waveform defibrillators deliver a more consistent magnitude of current they tend to successfully terminate arrhythmias at lower energies than monophasic waveform defibrillator so efficacious uh, efficacy wise both monophasic and defibril biphasic defibrillators are same they are equal in uh, reversing the rhythm back to normal sinus rhythm but the only difference comes because monophasic uses uh, uh, like more energy to reverse the rhythm than the biphasic defibrillator the side effects which happen with the monophasic defibrillator are high like myocardial necrosis myocardial damage these all things are more with the monophasic than the biphasic that is why recent days like, like currently we are using only the monophasic defib uh, biphasic defibrillators so energy selection ventricular fibrillation or the pulseless vt for the monophasic it is 360 joules and for the biphasic it is 120 to 200 joules so uh, like uh, for a cardiac arrest patient when you are you, cardiac arrest patient when you have seen that vf with arrest directly go for defibrillation with 200 joules mot whatever maximum energy that is available and then repeat the same energy throughout the cardiac cycle uh, throughout the uh, cycles how many cycles you are doing cpr you can repeat the same amount of energy for cardioversion uh, atrial fibrillation uh, you can use 200 joules for monophasic devices 120 to 200 joules for biphasic devices atrial flutter 100 joules for monophasic devices 50 to 100 joules for biphasic devices and for uh, ventricular tachycardia with pulse 200 for monophasic and 100 for biphasic these all differences uh, the why this difference in energy is there means uh, that depends upon whether it is an atrial arrhythmia or a ventricular uh, arrhythmia for a ventricular tachycardia with pulse some of the electrical activity and some of the cardiac contractions are becoming uh, are traversed into the circulation uh, with the pulse that is why lesser energy is needed compared to ventricular tachycardia without pulse so that is a difference between vt with pulse and vt without pulse i want to tell you briefly about this uh, aha guidelines because that is important when the defibrillation will take place and how it has to be used with uh, cpr for the in hospital cardiac arrest and this is the this is the chain of survival for the in hospital cardiac arrest and the out of hospital cardiac arrest for an adult patient so in hospital cardiac arrest whenever you see that a patient is in arrest immediate recognition then activation of emergency response system that is code blue activation then immediately whoever uh, nurse or the doctor is available there first start high quality cpr then uh, after starting high quality cpr immediately arrange for defibrillation and defibrillate so here comes our defibrillation so where in out of hospital cardiac arrest defibrillation takes place means again here also activation of emergency immediately uh, call for an ambulance service activation of emergency response system 
immediately who are the bystanders available uh, start a high quality cpr and by the time if a uh, ambulance comes that's okay aed or if in public places automated external defibrillators are available then you should get the automated external defibrillator connect to the patient and start defibrillation so this is where the defibrillation stands in a in hospital cardiac arrest and a out of hospital cardiac arrest so i think you should be well aware of this this is this is the acls guidelines uh, 2020 update for the adult cardiac arrest algorithm so where does where do we shock and how to give shock and how to do cpr everything is there in this table and uh, what are the 5h and 5t's any time you see a patient with a cardiac arrest either in hospital or, uh, of course out of hospital you can't do anything whether if you are attending the patient Uh, you are giving some injection or something. You are by the side of a patient, and you see that patient has collapsed suddenly and went into a cardiac arrest. Always think of what are the reversible causes of cardiac arrest. Then only uh, you you can reverse the rhythm or that you can reverse the patient easily. So what are the reversible causes of uh, cardiac arrest? Those are five H and five T's which comes with uh, mnemonic. So five H are hypovolemia, hypoxia. hydrogen ion imbalance that is acidosis hyper hypokalemia or hyperkalemia hypothermia 5h and 5t's are tension pneumothorax cardiac tamponade pulmonary thrombosis coronary thrombosis and any toxins so always think of always first always think of reversible causes so because if you are thinking of reversible causes so suppose hypo uh, hypovolemia is there if you give fluid patient will be revived immediately if hypoxia is there if you give oxygen patient will revive immediately and you will save energy and time both so suppose uh, uh, when you starting cpr one person should start cpr and uh, give oxygen the other person should uh, give oxygen and attach a monitor or the defibrillator simultaneously so after attaching a defibrillator you will see whether the shock rhythm is shockable or non shockable so if it is a shockable rhythm what are the shockable rhythms vf and pulseless vt then you will shock the rhythm shock the patient if it is a non shockable rhythm what are the non shockable rhythms asystole and pulseless electrical activity for them there is no point of giving a shock then you will give give epinephrine as early as possible and continue the cpr always remember all of after giving shock what are you going to do are you going to assess the rhythm no continue the cpr immediately there should be no time lapse between delivering of shock and resuming the cpr always in this entire algorithm of the uh, resuscitation what you will do the interruption should be less than 10 seconds always so uh, again you should continue the cpr and after continuing the cpr after 2 minutes you will check the rhythm again if it is a shockable rhythm you will shock again after shock again continue the cpr during this course the other person should be able to access for get an access for an iv iv line and give epinephrine for every 3 to 5 minutes and a small note about the cpr quality push hard and push fast push hard that is at least 2 inches or 5 cm depth fast such a way that 100 to 120 mi uh, minute uh, per minute and uh, allow complete chest recoil minimize interruption in the compressions avoid excessive ventilation and suppose if two persons are there one is giving cpr and the other one is uh, holding the defibrillator paddles they should change the rescuer for every 2 minutes because after 2 minutes the first rescuer will give get fatigued you know they cannot give effect give uh, effective cpr they cannot give that is why the rescuer should be changed if no advanced airway 30 is to 2 is the compression ventilation ratio so advanced airway means endotracheal intubation or a laryngeal mask airway if there is no advanced airway means there is no possibility for intubation you can continue with the cpr alone after 30 compressions you can give two ventilations uh, that is a compression ventilation ratio and uh, here also they have given biphasic and the monophasic 120 to 200 joules the energy and epinephrine 1 mg for every 3 to 5 minutes so what are the types of defibrillators 
types of defibrillators are automated external defibrillator, semi-automated AED, standard defibrillator with monitor, transvenous or implanted defibrillator. So this is the AED. This is usually seen in all public places recently in airports, railway stations, shopping malls, offices, everywhere AED is there. This is by the name itself tells that it is automated. It is automatical, automatical detection of the uh, arrhythmia. So it analyzes the heart rhythm by itself. It charges and then delivers the shock by itself. So that a lay person, like even uh, our uh, family members or relatives, uh, whoever doesn't know about the defibrillation, cardioversion also, they can deliver the shock. So it cannot be overridden manually and can take 10 to 20 seconds to determine the arrhythmia. So it is uh, unsurprisingly very easy to use and speed of use are important factors for success. Here in the image, you can see this is the AED. This is the on and off button, shock button. And uh, here, these are the ad adhesive patches. So here, a lay person will stand. He'll, he should just know how to connect the patches on the chest. After connecting, the AED will automatically uh, recognize the rhythm. Recognize the rhythm, analyzes the cardiac rhythm. If it is a shockable rhythm, it will announce stand clear. Then we have to stand away from the patient. After that, it will deliver the shock automatically. So these are the steps. First, turn on the AED, attach the pads, and it analyzes the cardiac rhythm. And automatically, if it is a shockable rhythm, it delivers the shock. And before delivering shock, definitely it will announce stand clear. At the time, be aware that you be away, away from the patient so that you, we will not get injured. Semi-automated external defibrillator. So these all, this is almost similar to the AED, but it can be overridden and usually has an ECG display. Suppose it, uh, it, it can deliver a shock by itself, but if it is showing a rhythm, if you want to change the energy or if you don't want to shock or if you want to shock for a rhythm, then you can do manually. So this is usually used by the paramedic people and uh, uh, these are available in the hospitals. Then this is a standard defibrillator that we use. This comes with the two paddles. This is the charge, the energy selection, charge button, charge button, shock button. And here comes the synchronized, uh, synchronized op synchronization option. So the other type is implantable cardioverter, de cardioverter defibrillator. So the ICD generator is placed within the chest either through a implanted way or through a transvenous technique. The leads will be placed in the atrium and the ventricle to even uh, to pace the heart as well. So that uh, the pacing option plus the defibrillator option will be available. That is why it is called as cardioverter defibrillator. So uh, next. So what we have seen till now, we have seen the uh, positioning of the pads, equipment needed, and then uh, when, why to, when to defibrillate, why to defibrillate and technique like uh, how to apply the pads, how to defibrillate, how to charge, how to shock and then what are the differences between monophasic and biphasic which is uh, uh, like which is used in uh, which, uh, uh, which situation and then uh, energy selection, what is energy that is required and then what are the guidelines, 5H and 5Ts. What is the chain of survival in defibrillation? Where does it stand in in-hospital and the out-of-hospital cardiac arrest? And the cardiac arrest algorithm, CPR quality, 5H and 5Ts we have studied. And after that, the types of defibrillators. So I think regarding defibrillation, we have done everything. So we'll go on to cardioversion. So when, you, when do you give, do cardioversion? Already we have studied in uh, at supraventricular tachycardia, atrial tachycardia, atrial flutter, atrial fibrillation, the ventricular tachycardia with pulse. So whenever uh, unstable tachycardia is seen, then you have to car directly go for cardioversion. So when, they, when do you say it is an unstable car uh, tachyarrhythmia? Whenever the patient is having hypotension like systolic blood pressure less than 90, acutely altered mental status, 
when whenever there are signs of shock ischemic chest discomfort and acute heart failure these are the signs of a unstable tachycardia so whenever you see them directly go for cardioversion so usually we say there are two types of cardioversion chemical and electrical but whenever it is an unstable directly go for electrical cardioversion and uh, go for electrical cardioversion so chemical cardioversion is nothing but using the antiarrhythmic drugs to alter the flow of electrical activity electrical means the shock delivered synchronized with the qrs complex of the ecg so i told you what are the differences uh, defibrillation it is a emergency procedure it is used to save the life of a patient when the patient has got arrested or in a ventricular tachycardia or in a ventr ventricular fibrillation so but cardioversion is not like that it is a it can be a emergency procedure when you are using for this kind of tachycardia patient who is unstable it can be emergency technique but it is elective also in some arrhythmias which are there for prolonged period of time like atrial fibrillation with controlled rate if it is required to reverse the rhythm then you have to uh, give a cardioversion at that time when you are using electively you have to therapeutically anticoagulation uh, give for at least 3 to 4 weeks to rule out and uh, before doing cardioversion you have to rule out the intracardiac thrombus by performing a transesophageal echocardiogram and then if uh, to you have to rule out and then do the procedure of cardioversion so this is the uh, image so this is the ecg p wave q wave r r wave s wave this is the t wave always it should be uh, delivered during this interval only during the peak of r wave it should be done, completed before the t wave uh, before the t wave comes during this period only the cardioversion should be done because uh, after this if you are giving during this vulnerable period the heart will be prone of ventricular will be prone to ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation that is why always avoid this vulnerable period of t wave it should be given only during this period of the qrs complex starting from peak of r wave it should be started and before the t wave comes it should be completed so this rhythm, this image you can see this is a normal rhythm this is a irregular heart rate here it's an elective procedure patient will have an iv access will have a fluid will the pads connected and the doctor will be sitting like this and the cardioversion machine seeing the rhythm and cardioversion will be done so and uh, sedation will be given for an elective procedure because patient will be awake and patient will have the pain so in this ecg you can see after cardioversion the rhythm is reverted into a normal heart rhythm so now again a small video regarding the technique of uh, defib uh, cardioversion the pad placement will be the same for both defibrillation as well as the cardioversion it is anterolateral only then turn on turning on the defibrillator it is the same it will and it will show the rhythm of the uh, heart now it is looking like a atrial tachycardia narrow complexes then synchronized button synchronized cardioversion select the energy then deliver before delivering then clear all personnel shock then you can see the rhythm is reverted okay so the defibrillator should be placed in the synchronized mode which permits the search for a large r wave or the s wave the delivered energy is selected manual button depression by the operator causes the defibrillator to discharge an electric current that lasts less than 4 milliseconds and avoids the vulnerable period of cardiac repolarization when vf can be induced that is it should start in as a 
synchronized mode it should start with the peak of r wave or uh, the during the qrs complex is completed before the t wave comes because t wave is a vulnerable period so when the shock is delivered during this period uh, or cardioversion is uh, done during this period the heart will go into vf or a vt the t wave should be avoided and the defibrillator is designed in such a technique that when you turn on the synchronization mode the peak of r wave will be detected on the ecg so uh, ecg then uh, the cardioversion shock will be delivered and the duration of the shock will be less than 4 milliseconds such that before the t wave comes the shock will be done so that is a safety technique to avoid the heart going into vt or vf so this is a small introduction to the uh, adult tachycardia with uh, pulse algorithm uh, so whenever heart rate is more than 150 per minute uh, that is tachyarrhythmia identify and treat the underlying cause always remember airway breathing circulation maintain a patent airway assist breathing if necessary if hypoxemic give oxygen and uh, to identify the rhythm connect to a cardiac monitor monitor the blood pressure and pulse oximetry at gain an iv access to led ecg if available then i have told you if it is a to say it is unstable this should be there either a hypotension altered mental status signs of shock ischemic chest discomfort or an acute heart failure so if it is an unstable i told you always directly go for a synchronized cardioversion if required you can give sedation if it is uh, if the if it is a patient with hemo very hemodynamically unstable you can avoid sedation also and uh, if it is for supraventricular uh, and you can see if it is a if the uh, tachyarrhythmia is stable then you can see whether it is a wide qrs complex or a narrow qrs complex for narrow qrs complex uh, always consider giving adenosine and before that you can try for a vagal maneuver also and uh, adenosine the dose will be first dose 6 mg loading uh, push followed by the second dose will be 12 mg and the synchronized cardioversion dose we have already discussed and the other anti arrhythmic drugs will be given as uh, required so the difference between cardioversion and defibrillation in a brief cardioversion will be an elective planned procedure defibrillation is an emergency life saving procedure cardioversion is a synchronized shock defibrillation is an unsynchronized shock cardioversion is a low energy shock you can start from 50 to 100 joules defibrillation is a high energy shock always above 120 and cardioversion there can be some delay because it can happen in uh, some stable patients also defibrillation is a uh, always in a emergency is always an emergency procedure is a life saving procedure so there should be no delay uh, anticoagulation is needed for a cardioversion in an elective patient whereas in an emergency cardioversion there is no need for anticoagulation defibrillation there is no anticoagulation needed in cardioversion because you you are using less joules of energy there is less damage to the myocardium in defibrillation there is more damage to the myocardium Uh, cardioversion is used in most of the arrhythmias except vt and vf whereas defibrillation is used in pulseless vt and vf so what are the complications uh, commonly common complications are atrial ventricular and junctional premature beats serious complications that can happen by delivering high energy shock or ventricular fibrillation that can also happen with the digitalis toxicity severe heart disease and improper synchronization and the thromboembolization myocardial necrosis myocardial dysfunction pulmonary edema painful skin burns so safety and precautions the paddles used should not be placed on a woman's breast or it should not be placed over a internal pacemaker patients and before the paddle is placed always use a conductive gel and there should be a good skin contact always announce remember this is very important always announce charge all clear and then only shock so i think we have done with ma major things so 
again one second we have done with the definition history these uh, indications contraindications anesthesia equipment positioning technique guidelines energy selection types of defibrillator cardioversion complications safety and precautions definition so i think we'll go into the special population like pregnancy and in children what you will do for pregnancy and in children these are the images that you can see in a pregnant lady pregnant mannequin and a pregnant lady first uh, the the technique you do the cpr will be the same placing the hand here everything maintaining the airway the technique will be the same most important thing that you have to do in a pregnant patient is manual left uterine displacement to remove the pressure of the gravid uterus over the inferior vena cava and let the venous drainage to happen in a normal way so first you have to manually displace the uterus to the towards the left side this is the two handed technique as you can see on the right side of the image and this is a one handed technique either can either is useful but you have to displace the uterus to the left side and then uh, give the shock a uh, shock the energy the jowls the placement of the pads everything is the same but only thing the lateral pad when you place over the apex of the heart just place it below the woman's breast so these are the small changes that are seen in the pregnant patient again i'm telling first important thing the uh, manual left uterine displacement either one handed technique or a two handed technique the placement of the hands for a cpr will not change play the airway management will not change and uh, the defibrillation pad placement will not change only thing is lateral pad you have to place below the women's breast because pad cannot be placed on the women's breast so that is the only thing that uh, needs a change uh, the, the, the small modification there so the rest of the things are the same here in the pregnant patient also always uh, see what are the reversible causes why the patient has collapsed what are the causes then go go as per the algorithm and post mortem cesarean delivery they say it should happen within 5 minutes to save the mother first saving the mother is important then the child the cesarean delivery should happen at the uh, moment if the if the gestational age is more than 32 weeks it should happen at that uh, uh, scenario only and the fetus should be delivered within 5 minutes then only effective cpr can take place to save the mother then uh, these are the uh, this is the pediatric cardiac arrest algorithm so in pediatric patients uh, first shock will be 2 joules per kg second shock 4 joules per kg subsequent shocks will be more than 4 joules per kg maximum we used is 10 joules per kg or an adult uh, dose so this is the shock uh, uh, algorithm that is used pediatrics uh, is uh, we are not involved into much so i am not going to discuss uh, with for, regarding that only regarding the shock energy i wanted to discuss that i have put this slide so i think we have dealt with almost all the sub subheadings that i have explained you uh, now we'll go into the mcqs related to the topic uh you can put your answers in the chat box each minute defibrillation is delayed reduces the chances of survival of sudden cardiac arrest by a one first option 50% second option 10% third option 20% fourth option 5% i couldn't see any answers it's okay it's a theoretical question only uh, it's 10% yeah, so each minute defibrillation is delayed reduces the chances of survival of the sudden cardiac arrest by 10% how long should you check for breathing while performing the cpr do not check for breathing continue chest compression second option 2 seconds third option 5 seconds 
both option no longer than 10 seconds your answers you can put in the chat box i have already discussed regarding this during the cardiac arrest algorithm the answer is no longer than 10 seconds yeah i could see the answers uh, it is mostly d one person has uh, said it's one first option no it's wrong it is the fourth option no longer than 10 seconds very good then the second third question in the icu a patient becomes suddenly unresponsive and pulseless and hypotensive with a cardiac monitoring indicating ventricular tachycardia what is the first therapeutic step a amiodarone 300 mg iv push b lidocaine 1.5 mg per kg iv push c defibrillation at 200 joules biphasic defibrillator at 360 joules biphasic your answers please i could see different answers but the scenario here is we'll go clear patient is unresponsive pulseless pulseless unresponsive with vt pulseless vt what is the first thing we have to do we have to defibrillate at 200 joules biphasic it this is 360 joules for monophasic because it's biphasic it is wrong so it is defibrillation at 200 joules biphasic the answer is c so which is the correct sequence uh, during cpr check pulse start cpr call for help activate trs defibrillator uh, second option defibrillator ss response check pulse maintain airway third one ss response activate trs check pulse start cpr defibrillator start cpr check pulse call for help and trs and defibrillator answer is yes i can see some of the answers coming yes very good the answer is c always as is the patient response uh, whether you have to wake him up and uh, see whether he is waking or not then immediately activate the emergency response system if it is a in hospital you can activate the code blue for an out of hospital you can call the ambulance then check the carotid pulse and start cpr and whenever a defibrillator is ready or available then immediately defibrillate so a 62 year old man comes to the er because of sob chest pain and palpitations he is hypertensive obese and has copd ptca was done 5 years back his medications include metoprolol aspirin ecg shows atrial fibrillation with a rapid ventricular response the patient is connected to a cardiac monitor while the team is securing iv access the patient becomes unresponsive he has no palpable pulses over the major arteries the cardiac monitor continues to show atrial fibrillation at a rate of 145 which of the following is most appropriate next step in the management of this patient answers please i could see different different answers coming b d e all different answers most of the responses are uh, some are correct some are wrong okay we'll analyze the scenario uh, now old man with a chest pain and palpitations initially he definitely had a atrial fibrillation with a rapid rate so he became unresponsive and there is no pulse it is nothing but a in hospital cardiac arrest then what you should do immediately start cpr then only defibrillation why cpr is important even before defibrillation even if your defibrillator is available why cpr is important before starting defibrillation is whenever you do a cardiac compressions uh, that maintains the coronary perfusion pressure and that maintains the amount of required energy that is required for the myocardium to contract once the rhythm is uh, reverted so always start the chest compressions first then only defibrillation so after defibrillation or the shock what you have to do do you check the rhythm no you have to immediately resume the cpr
ओके सो वाट रिदम्स आर् ट्रीटेड वित् कार्डियोवर्शन वीटी वित् पलस एंड एफ एट्रियल फ्लटर अंड एसवीटी वीटी वित् पलस एंड वि एफ एसवीटी अंड वीटी वित् पलस वाट आर् द रिदम्स आंसर्स प्लीज most of the answers are correct some are giving a responses a response to the option a no it is answer is atrial flutter and svt so this question uh, 65 year old man with hypertension presented to er with chest pain is having the following ecg what does the ecg show can you put uh, can someone of you put the answer for this ecg first ecg yes 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 the answer sir is correct anterior wall mi suddenly man started complaining of breathlessness on examination he is conscious heart rate is 150 pulse is there and his ecg is showing then vt very good so what will you do a chest compressions b synchronized cardioversion defibrillation wait and watch Yes, we'll go back to the scenario. So he is having VT, pulse is there, pulse is there. He is conscious. All of course the heart rate is one fifty, but pulse is there. VT with the pulse, always go for a synchronized cardioversion. So after cardioversion with hundred joules of energy, rhythm is not reverted back. What will you do? A cardioversion with increased energy, stop the procedure, give defibrillation, give adrenaline. what is your answers answers please yes almost all the answers are right the answer is cardioversion with an increased energy so that is uh, that is the other difference with the uh, cardioversion and defibrillation so when you are doing cardioversion you have to start with the lower energy 100 if you can't see the response you can increase the energy as uh, like in a step wise manner uh, but for a defibrillation directly you have to go for a higher energy so cardioversion with 100 joules it's uh, if it's not effective go for cardio uh, go for with the increased energy that's all uh, now i ask dr srinivas to speak over the next thank you madam that was very informative lecture regarding defibrillator and cardioversion effective cpr followed by defibrillator is very important to save a cardiac arrest patient and we should all be in a state to recognize all the reversible causes of the cardiac arrest like phi h and phi t s which madam has uh, emphasized uh, to recognize them during the cardiac arrest like uh, hypovolemia hypoxia hydrocyanosis hyper or hypokalemia Uh, hypothermia and all the five T's like uh, tamponade, toxins, uh, tension, pneumothorax, uh, cardiac uh, thrombosis or uh, pulmonary thrombosis. So we were uh, so during CPR we should all be recognizing these uh, reversible causes and also when there is during CPR and uh, after CPR in between when there is an uh, VF or uh, uh, VF you should defibrillate it properly so that all the uh, so that the patient regains his rhythm back. So Uh, defibrillator is one of the important and very useful equipment in the critical care environment uh, which we have and i hope the lecture today has made us uh, very confident in using defibrillator properly effectively and uh, correctly so always uh, make sure uh, that when all the nurses or the doctors uh, uh, who comes to the rounds in the morning or in the afternoon or in the night shift uh, to check the defibrillator whether it is working properly or not and whether it is charged properly or not 
and uh, while using defibrillator please use the interface properly uh, if you don't know what is the controls uh, check for an uh, voice over control whether it is useful to you while uh, operating and check the lcd whether it is working properly or not and uh, whether the rhythm is clearly visible in the lcd or not and also check the cables and connections sometimes uh, we we think that the uh, defibrillator is connected and if it is not working then we blame and uh, we uh, uh, we get into panic that defibrillator is not working so always check the cables and the connections be, uh, before using the defibrillator and also check the batteries in the defibrillator machine whether they are working properly or not because in times when you cannot connect to the uh, source electric source you can use the batteries to charge and give the shock and also while using the paddles uh, use a, uh, sufficient jelly so that you won't burn the uh, skin or the hair which is present on the patient and also that paddles are also very big because it has to deliver a large amount of uh, shock like 200 joules so be careful while uh, uh, delivering the shock and don't uh, um, hold the two uh, two paddles at a time in one hand and operate with the other hand uh, it can sometimes cause shock and so be careful while using them so the, this is it and uh, we uh, we thank iscm uh, for uh, giving this opportunity and i request if there are any doubts they can ask now ओके द वॉट द फेजेस वॉट द मैडम वॉज वॉट मैडम वॉज explaining us that uh, when the patient has an cardiac arrest uh, there will be some electric uh, cardiac arrest is a decrease of uh, blood supply to the heart and when there is a decrease blood supply to the heart uh, there uh, the heart will go into electrical phase that is in 0 to 4 minutes and circulatory phase uh, circulatory phase from 4 to 10 minutes and the metabolic phase that from 10 to 15 minutes that is the blood supply it is decreasing but still it has some blood supply for the electrical activity of the heart to uh, uh, to pump the blood out of the heart after that the uh, after that the electrical phase is gone electric with the electrical phase the circulatory phase is also gone and later the uh, the heart will go into an uh, anaerobic phase uh, where uh, this uh, me metabolic phase uh, will set in during why we check breathing during cpr see cpr uh, is done for cardiac arrest and uh, the abc has changed from uh, uh, has changed to cab that is circulation airway and breathing we check uh, breathing uh, to, uh, to know whether the uh, uh, whether the uh, scenario is correctly and the cardiac arrest scenario or not otherwise first we have to do only chest compression then take care of the airway and then take care of the breathing how long cpr can continue usually cpr can continue up to 30 to 45 minutes after 45 minutes uh, uh, the uh, cerebral circulation will not uh, give a good result and uh, there is no meaningful uh, circulation will be present after 45 minutes of cpr sometimes we can continue up to 1 1 and 1/2 hour but the effective cpr is the, if the patient regains his uh, circulation and everything within 30 to 45 minutes any other questions new message Neuro xylocard and BT. 
usually uh, earlier we used to give xylocard in uh, vt but nowadays uh, there is not much role in uh, using the xylocard in vt are you asking the vt with pulse or vt without pulse and also it depends on the uh, uh, condition of the patient whether he is uh, uh, stable or unstable and if it is an unstable vt with pulse there is no role of electrical cardioversion it is straight forward and uh, uh, um, uh, sorry no uh, no role of chemical cardioversion it is straightly electrical cardioversion yeah we can do cpr in post valvular surgery actually in post valvular surgery in ct post uh, the uh, the wires they will cut the wires open and they will do an uh, internal cardiac massage when the patient is having an cardiac arrest and also there are paddles it, uh, present which are uh, used in the intra cardiac uh, paddles which are very thin uh, thin uh, uh, thin diameter and with uh, low voltage we can use this uh, inter intra cardiac uh, um, uh, this paddles placing the pads are is universal whether the patient had cdva surgery or not why you want to keep uh, the pads in the posterior when the anterior chest is available no need for placing uh, putting the pads posteriorly you can place the pads anterior only as madam has said anterior and lateral you can place them in the anterior and lateral any more questions yeah overdriving pacing is one concept which cardiologists usually do when uh, there is an uh, uh, tachycardia which is not uh, uh, relieved by the chemical cardioversion and uh, this vt uh, svt patients who have uh, where this uh, electrical cardioversion is also not uh, achieving the uh, achieving the sinus rhythm then the then the cardiologist will go for an overdriving pacing to achieve a sinus rhythm this concept is there and it is also useful concept uh so you mean that uh, patient is having vf and vt with an hypovolemic shock if you have if you have recognized that the if you have recognized that the patient is having hypovolemia because of bleeding then you have to go to an uh, cath lab and do an angiogram to correct that internal bleeding through an uh, angiogram uh, and uh, and uh, uh cast that uh, bleeding artery and there is no ro- uh, without correcting the hypovolemia there is no role of uh, defibrillator
ఓకే థ్యాంక్ యూ థ్యాంక్ యూ ఎవ్రీ వన్ ఫర్ పార్టిసిపేటింగ్ అండ్ వి థ్యాంక్ ఐఎస్సిసిఎం ఫర్ గివింగ్ దిస్ ఆపర్చునిటీ థ్యాంక్ యూ